Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fireplay Podcast. I am Canna Campbell. We're going to get straight into it because this morning is an incredible, incredible podcast because we are joined by the one and only Gabby Bernstein. I'm literally like shaking. I'm so excited and so incredibly nervous. Gabby, thank you so much. It is such a huge honor to have you on today's podcast. How are you? My love, I am good. I am just acknowledging to everybody that I was so spaced out and I showed up late for you and I'm usually really early, Uh, but I'm really happy to be with you and I'm so excited to do a powerhouse interview right now. So thank you. Now, you are coming to Australia in just a few weeks and I'm actually booked in to come and see you on the 30th of April, which is a Sunday. I've blocked my day out. Uh, You're going everywhere in Australia. Can you quickly tell me about this? Yes, my love. I'm coming to Sydney. I'm coming to Melbourne and I'm coming to Brisbane. So the first talk is um, the 29th, I think, in in Melbourne. And then the 30th is when you're coming to Sydney. And then May 2nd, I will be in Brisbane. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to be back with you guys. Well, I highly recommend everyone like come along to this, but let's Talk about manifestation because I'm a financial planner. So I'm all about the tax, the laws, the rules and regulations, but I'm huge on manifestation and the money mindset. When you combine the two, it's really like groundbreaking, life-changing stuff. I've been doing a lot of manifestation work since I was a little little girl, but I want to hear about you. When did you realize how incredibly powerful manifestation is was it like a light bulb moment or was it a gradual awareness that just compounded over time like how did this happen for you well I remember I was 25 years old and I was newly sober and in my mom's basement and I was watching these DVDs I'm gonna really age myself now and I was watching these these uh Hay House DVDs called You Can Heal Your Life And it was Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer, and they were all talking about manifesting and how you can manifest your reality. And I remember thinking as I sat there watching them, wow, I want that. I really want that in my life. I want to experience that. I want to know that. And that kind of kicked me off on this big metaphysical deep dive of really uncovering what manifesting is and how I could live in a way that was different than the way I'd been previously living. And I've been a teacher of this work for now 17 years. It's kind of crazy. And here we are. You know what I love about you is your qualification is life experience. You're so incredible, incredibly authentic. And it just gives just so much magic and power and like empowerment to everything that you teach. Like you have profoundly changed my world. You've changed millions of people around the world and not with like short-term fix, but long-term sustainable changes that are really practical and in a busy, crazy world. Like you, you get the stress and pressures. And I just love that about you. Um, When did you realize this was your calling to go and help other people? I think I always knew I was, young. I was 14 and I was the president of the regional Jewish youth group in my community. And I remember looking around uh, the live events that we did. They were live events. They were like weekends in the temple where we would lead these, these, you know, kids around these spiritual conversations. And I was so deeply moved by it that I knew even then that there was something more for me in being a teacher and being a spiritual teacher in particular. So I've known since I was 14 years old. (laughs) That's the answer. (laughs) Now, a lot of my followers are into building realistic, long-term, sustainable, authentic financial freedom. But when I talk to a lot of people, they have, you know, blocks and they have these like conversations or stories that they've told themselves about money. And I know this is something you're very familiar with and you do a lot of work and a lot of your workshops and your books really address this. But what would you say are the most common blocks around money and the flow of money and wealth creation? Well, we manifest what we believe. So if we have thoughts and beliefs around money that we likely picked up as children that are in any way stuck in lack or in fear or in uncertainty, then that's going to be a lot of what we reflect back. That's going to be our experience financially. And 
when we start to change our inner world, when we start to adjust to the belief systems that have been holding us back, that's when we can start to really experience financial changes. So I always say when you really change your self-worth, you change your net worth. And that's that's huge. It truly is. And it works. It, 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 it's a genuine, it's a, it's a real thing. And that was the case for me. I can vouch for that. I um, have been doing this work for a long time and I follow so many of your practical steps and the shifts and breakthroughs are quite profound. And you I feel like you've just opened up a whole new path in my life where I'm just going from strength to strength and just, it's it, absolutely incredible your magic. Where is the first place for someone to start if they really want to like break away these blocks and clear the space and open up themselves the flow of abundance and prosperity in their lives? Well, I think that the first place to really start is to want it. We can't change what we're not willing to see. So wanting change requires the desire to turn inward, the desire to to be self-reflective, the curiosity about what might be happening on the inside. And so if you're listening to this or if you're, you know, reading any of my books or even on a path of this kind in any way, shape or form, then you have already probably raised your hand and said, yeah, I want this. I want change in my life. I want growth in my life. And if that's the case, then I think there's a lot of possibility for wild transformations to occur. And a lot of people may not even realize the power of just saying yes to that. Can I ask you a question about the female and male energy with manifestation work? Because I know you work with you know people around the world, no matter what gender they associate themselves with. Now, my partner, Tom, he's like a, he's an Australian guy. Like he grew up in the country. He's a really like blokey bloke. However, he's very spiritual deep down and, uh, but also he's very practical, you know, and the other day, Tom and I went for a walk and this really weird thing has happened in our lives. We're trying to sell um, his apartment and the weirdest things happen in the universe. Every time we've tried to sell it, something's happened. So the tenants refuse to move out. There were legal problems with the um, apartment. There were body corporate strata issues. It was like this constant block. We finally get it on the market. And even though it's the most incredible, beautiful apartment with amazing views, it's like the perfect bachelor pad. We didn't get a single offer. So we started reducing the price. Anyway, it's got to the end of the campaign and Tom and I are looking at each other and I'm like, it's like the apartment is cursed. So we said, okay, all right, we've got to make some decisions. We need to talk about this. So we went for a walk together. And I left the kids at home and the dogs and just went, just him and I. And I was talking to Tom and I I talked to Tom about everything. And it's like, it's like there's a higher power above us that really does not want us to sell the apartment. Like it's, it's a, there's something going on spiritually here. Like anyway, Tom goes, can you just cut the crap with your manifesting energetic? But you're right. There's a, it's a sign. We're not we're not supposed to sell the apartment. We have to have to keep on to it. We need to keep on to it and to hold it on for our children. And I'm like Tom. That's exactly the same. I'm saying the same thing here. Like, why do females talk about it in a different way? To oh, I shouldn't say females. But, you know, whichever um, identity you you associate yourself with, the you know the different female versus male energy approaches manifestation in such a, a different way. I find. Do do you experience that as well? Well, I think that women often are more spiritually inclined. We're all about deepening that sort of maternal energy of of I'm trying to say this properly. I guess I guess I think that women in general just lean more into self reflection and uh, personal growth and personal development, and it doesn't mean that that's not expanding very far. But the way that we lean into it can often be very spiritual. And I think that men are coming to these kinds of messages much more than ever before. Nevertheless, I think that wherever you are in your experience in life, whether you're, you know, like you said, he's a bloke, right? So it just may be that this this is how he has to hear things. It just needs to be translated in a different lexicon for him. And that's just that's just where it's at. And that's why I think it's, you know important for us who those of us who are listening that are women that we, we have these really beautiful spiritual beliefs that we really don't push it on our partners but that we just we just do our best to be it and then translate it when it's necessary when it's possible and translate it like well let's think about it like 
there is maybe rejection is protection or something like that, right? And finding ways to communicate these messages in a, in a, in a different way for these folks. And it's really profound. Yeah. It's, um, thank you for explaining that so beautifully. I will be thinking of that next time I try and talk to Tom about my manifestation work, which I have to say he's completely on board with, but just doesn't like to sometimes admit that um, entirely to me, uh, just because he likes to challenge me around manifestation. When it comes to wealth creation and creating financial harmony, you've got so many different practical steps and strategies to help people do this manifestation work. Is there a particular technique that you really prefer over your others? Because you've got meditations, you've got affirmations, you've got visualization, you've got so many different you know, strategies for people to apply in a realistic world. Which one's your favorite? I think that my favorite would be to use my practice, the choose again method, which is to notice the negative thoughts that you have on repeat. And when you notice them and you notice how they make you feel, you forgive yourself or you forgive the thought. You're like, oh, that's just the thought that I keep thinking. I'm going to forgive that. And then you reach for the next best feeling thought, which means you start to say, okay, well, I'm going to, that, that next thought feels better. And I reach for the next thought that feels better. And I reach for the next thought that feels better. And what's beautiful about this is it's a practice of guiding yourself out of the storyline of chaos and uncertainty and fear and really bridging yourself back into that powerful mindset. And if you do this often, you start to adjust the way you experience your life. And that's when you start to manifest more of what you want. And it's it's in my book, Super Attractor. It's a really powerful technique. I have your book and I absolutely love it. And I use the choose again technique myself on a regular basis. And I can confirm it does really change the way that you react to certain things. And you do actually end up building a much healthier, more sustainable mindset around your day, around your goals, around all your challenges. It's it's really quite incredible. When it comes to wealth creation and, and building financial prosperity, some people have a block around um, not feeling worthy enough, like they're supposed to be struggling. They've been told that you have to work hard. You have to work long hours. You know, you have to have lots of sacrifices along the way. What would you say to someone with that particular mindset and how to shift out of that mindset? I would really advise that person to read my book, Happy Days, because it's all about undoing the stories from our past so that we can be free in the present. And so many of the storylines that we and the belief systems of inadequacy and unworthiness stem from childhood experiences and childhood wounds. And so if we really give ourselves the opportunity to start to heal those inner wounds, we can really change those patterns. And so I don't think that the feelings of unworthiness can be healed overnight. They take time. But that book is a beautiful guide for, for helping the reader heal from those belief systems. So people can definitely heal from their childhood wounds. They can use these to channel them for a, a, a greater life. Yes. Yes. I wrote a whole book about it. Happy days. <laughs> well, everyone has definitely got to go and listen to this. Now, what would be the number one reason why everyone should be coming to see you at your event and joining in your workshops right now? The number one reason would be if you want to have a really, really good time and you want to walk away with powerful tools on how to transform your life. I can say that with full conviction. I would be so remiss if anyone didn't come to this. So yeah, definitely. I've got all the details. You can link them to deargabby.com slash Australia. I don't want anyone to miss this. Me too. I, as I said, I'm going to be there. And what I love about what you do is you're teaching not just quick fixes for people, you're changing people's lives for the long run. And these are things that you can apply on a, on a realistic daily basis for sustainable long-term shifts and changes and the breakthroughs. I actually did your 21 day challenge at the beginning of the year and I absolutely loved it. So many crazy things happened to me. Mm. And in fact, when I was doing this, I was sharing on my personal Instagram account and someone actually DM'd me and said, Kanna, I have this feeling that you're going to interview Gabby Bernstein. And I thought, I kind of laughed it off. I was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. But as if that's ever going to happen. But this woman, like she planted this seed in my head. And a couple of days later, I'm like, I really need to sit on this and think about this. This She could be right. Like, what if she is right? So I started 
visualizing, talking to you literally like this, um, be able to like give you a hug yeah. even, like chatting with you at um, this exact moment. And I was, it is quite freaky how I managed to kind of connect with your staff and, yeah. and organize this. So I, I manifested this conversation from the 28 one day challenge at the beginning of the year. And I have to say to anyone who gets the opportunity to do Gabby's 21 day challenge, do it, get on board straight away. Mm. It is, it is quite incredible. And uh, I had, in, I did a vlog actually, which I put on YouTube, sharing all the different things that happened day by day. So Oh, you have to send that to me. I need to see that. Send that to me. It's been an absolute honor to chat with you. I'm going to send you my vlog from when I did your 20, 21 day challenge. And uh, I'm actually wrapping up uh, Manifesting March, which was my annual challenge, which goes, is, I think in we're year six or seven of doing this, where we really do show people how incredibly powerful manifestation is if you want to really live your best and most fulfilled, authentic life possible. You're an absolute superstar, so incredibly powerful and so incredibly inspiring. I will see you and hopefully everyone else at your tour and I'll be at the Sydney event on the 30th of April. Uh, Gabby, thank you so much. I am so excited. Thank you, gorgeous. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful night. Bye.